you know, it's the 50th Players Championship. No one's ever repeated the Players Championship, but really, I mean, you can't have a better candidate than Scotty Scheffler right now. Historically, this has not been a tournament that you win your first time, but if there's a year to do it, it might, it might be someone from here. There's always an unexpected player that makes a splash. Last year it was Minwoo Lee. A year later, he's a fan favorite. Stressful week. This is a very stressful golf course. Preparation is over. Time to get this thing started. This player's championship is underway, and this one has history behind it. Welcome to the 50th Players' Championship. New building, almost done. Look in his camera area. All right, we're good? Morning. Players week is done. Players week, is this your first one? First players, yeah. It's exciting to see all the buzz. Easy to see how this can be a launching pad for, you know, up and coming names in the sport in general. Hello. This week is really unlike any other. It's obviously one of the biggest weeks of the year, but at the same time, we're in our backyard. We're in Ponte Vedra. We're sleeping in our own beds, and really, all of our staff is here. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the players. We are going to do a meeting like this every morning, uh, just so we can get everybody synced up on the content that we're doing. So let's run through it. Colin, I don't know if you want to chat about your international stuff real quick, what you guys have going today. We're going to go shoot some B-roll of Minwoo, Adam Scott, uh, Jason Day. We're also looking for B-roll of partners who are not on site, so the other one would be South Africans. So if anybody were to see Christian Bezadeno, Garrick Higo, Eric Van Royen somewhere on the course, if you could shoot me a message and let me know where they're at, that would be great. The Jays presser at 11 o'clock today. Yes. That's usually about an hour. It's not like a 15, 30 right. minute presser. Just plan accordingly if you, anybody's shooting that one. So we'll go live on Twitter, Facebook, uh, dot com as well. Uh, Dana, I know you guys are going to be doing some cut stuff this morning. You're already you're already doing it, <laughs> which is awesome. All right, cool. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks everybody. What'd you get here? I got here around 8:30. Got some breakfast, walked out to the putting green, saw who was over there, and then stopped over here and did some right just getting ready for the day. It makes it somewhat easier than you would think a week like this would be. It's a huge week, but everyone's here to help contribute to those efforts. We've got a couple pressers. Jay will talk. We got Scotty. That's obviously story A. Line 1A, 1B, 1C, how he's going to respond, both defending his title here, but also last time we saw him, he was dominant at Bay Hill. It's Tuesday, it's about 11 a.m. Scotty Scheffler has just started his players' preparations with a, a pressure on the back nine. Probably just get in nine, have a, an easier day after obviously the big win on Sunday. You gotta pace yourself heading into this week. He's the number one player in the world, number one player in the FedEx Cup, coming off a five-shot win that really was a, a completely dominant performance all around. We all know Scotty's a record-setting ball striker, maybe the best ball striker since Tiger, but the putting has been an issue over the last year, and he said his goal was to, um, to stop trying to be so perfect on the greens, accepting misses if he feels like he was doing the right thing, and he putted great, and when you combine that ball striking with his great putting, then he's unstoppable. And so there's really no reason to think that he can't do it again this week and make some history at this event. Scotty, no one's defended a title here so far ever. What do you think makes it so tough? I just think it's a golf course where you don't see a lot of repeat winners in general. That's why I think it's one of the best places we play on tour, just because it really doesn't suit one type of player. I think it's a special place to come back year after year and get to play this golf course and, you know, compete with the best players in the world and the best players on our tour. And it's always a fun week to come here and compete. Hey, Scotty, uh, you've maintained a pretty historic ball striking this season. I'm just wondering, like, are you tweaking things constantly with your swing? Because when we see you, it just seems like it's been automatic for the last year. But are you constantly still making tweaks to what the swing looks like? Yeah, uh, for sure. I think golf's a pretty challenging game. Um, and so I'm constantly putting in the work to maintain where I'm at. You know, always working on my grip, always working on the fundamentals. Um, usually when my swing gets out of whack, it's usually something fundamental that's going wrong. And, you know, it's going to cause some sort of, you know, thing to happen in my swing and it usually always comes down to the fundamentals of setup and whatnot.
this being a venue that guys come back to every year, they're not learning the golf course over again. You know, they know how to play it. A lot of the guys like Scotty and Victor and Rory, they've played it tons of times. They know the tricks that Pete Dye has laid out there. It's more getting a feel for how it's going to play this week. Yeah, Scotty said the greens are really receptive, but once they're on the greens, it's really firm. So they're trying to find that balance of how soft is it going to be? How is it going to pro progress over the day? But like I think, like you said, it, today's almost like a formation lap. If we're going to compare it to NASCAR. Everyone's just kind of figuring things out, trying to figure out where their game's at compared to this course, what the conditions are like. Tomorrow they'll refine, and then they'll really they'll get into it once the play starts. Yep. We're just getting kind of set with all the first timers. We gotta strategize a bit. First timer on the first timers. Three, six out. Cost for you. Twice. Three, six out. Tough links commemorating your first players. Sweet. Thank you shape. so much. You know Tyler Dennis. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How's it going? This is good to see you again, Tyler. We've got Cab out here, a veteran of it, showing me around. Cab's responsible for our first timers column today, highlighting some of the. Some of the guys. Here's the man in front. Oh, yeah. Great to see you. Good to see you. Welcome to Jacksonville. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate ten, it. I live 10 minutes up the road. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, I know. I get to sleep in my own bed, go to my own places. It's nice. This class, first timers, is one of the more accomplished that we've had in recent years coming up into this. Ludwig's won. He's on a Ryder Cup. Then you've got Nick Dunlap, first amateur to win in 30 years. You have Vincent Norman, who's won last year as a rookie. You've got Austin Eckroat, who just won last week. You have Jake Knapp, who just won a couple weeks ago. What up, sir? How are you? Doing well. Great to see you. Great to see you. You've been a pro for a long time, but now you're getting all this yeah. recognition and requests and being kind of a hot commodity here at this first time timers press conference. What, Just in a general sense, what's your take on just how this has all happened? I enjoy competing and playing, and, and this has all been a, a bit of a whirlwind, but I'm doing my best to uh, manage it. Jake Knapp is just becoming quickly a buzzy name in the golf world. Since I haven't been to most of these courses, I'm walking around and I have no idea where I'm going half the time, so there's definitely some things where um, you know guys will walk by and they'll be like, welcome to the tour, Ricky, and that kind of stuff. So. I'm still just kind of figure out the lay of the land every week. Can you do the math? How many years have I been pro? A while. What's the year? <laughs> uh, turned pro at the beginning of 2016. Eight years already? Eight, eight years. Only twice in this tournament's history as a first time or one. Obviously, you only know what you know yep. so far, but does it feel like a spot where like you need to know where to miss and like that experience could help? It's not that a first timer can't win. I mean, I obviously think that you know, I'm not here to not try and win, but, uh, but yeah, just going to have to do my best to get comfortable on some of those shots. It's fun to see him progress to this level and his success is super well earned and to get this stage this week is going to be awesome to see how he plays. You did? I did, you're good, because you guys are doing the behind the scenes. Yeah. Like there yep. Minwoo, there's been, 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 there's We are on the player content team, and we provide content to players to post on their social media. Scotty Scheffler, Min Woo Lee, Max Homa, let's go down Garrett Kigo, just looking on the leaderboard, Wyndham Clark, so kind of players who, stars and emerging stars, so work, work with everyone across the board. He's the master of a selfie. Hey, Min Woo, you know, any chance we get a sound bite? That's what it's like being back after, you know. Yeah, sure. Being... Hey guys, it's Min Woo. We are back here on the 17th. Uh, cool memories, obviously. Um, had a really good time uh, all week. Um, hit, it, hit it in the water once or something like that, so I'll take that for the first year. Try not hit it in the water this year, but very cool. Cool to be back, and uh, hopefully this year will be special. Knocked it out of the park. Min Woo obviously played well here last year, worked a little bit, and then since then we create content for him almost, almost every single week, so whether it be Hype videos that we do for him, we kind of know what, he, what he's looking for, whether it be memes, you know, certain shots he want, wants to hit, stingers, you know, wants to do anything, we kind of work with him on that. What are you out here doing, man? Soaking up the sun, you know, yeah. like a salamander, yeah. watching golf. Who are you following this Aussie group? The cool Aussie group, man. If you put, like, Min Wu and Jay Day in a dark room, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference who's talking. They sound identical. Anybody on your radar as who's, who's shaping up for this week? 
I picked a completely out of left field winner, Windy Clark, Wyndham. Nobody picked him in the in the uh, expert picks. Of course, I'm in last, so I have to I have to do something sort of crazy to try to catch up. But. <laughs> The Players' Championship is underway. Weather is perfect. Um, temperature's perfect. No wind. So really, it's about easing your way into the tournament. You want to make sure to, you know, get off to a strong start here and just set the stage for the rest of this week. But, you know, we're going to see low scores today. Scoring conditions, obviously. Some guys are already going low. You know, we're watching Rory here, Birdie's first three holes. I didn't really have many expectations going out there today because it was like, okay, it feels good on the range and feels good in practice, but let's see how it is when, you know, you've got a card in your hand. But yeah, it was obviously a, a great start. Great start for the 2019 champion, especially a guy who was struggling before this week, had shot 76 on Sunday. He said that four round in the final round of Bay Hill, where he was really in contention, only four back to start the day was a wake-up call, that he'd been playing so much golf, he really wanted to play so much going to the Masters, and when you play that much, you spend less time practicing. And so he had to spend Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday putting in extra time at the range. Um, and that paid off today. He'd been struggling with his irons, and he had hit his irons great today. Really, I mean, 65 with two balls in the water is a pretty incredible round. Another guy off to a great start on Thursday is Xander Schauffele, sitting in solo second right now. If there's anyone on the PGA Tour that's in really great form, it's him. There you go, tie at the top. Just playing good golf. Yeah, pretty confident with you know where my game's at, and I've been struggling with the putter a little bit, but it was nice to see some putts going from distance today. Great, thanks so much, Ray. To help celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Players' Championship, Please welcome the one, the only, Mr. Jack Nicholas. Heard a little few things about Jack Nicholas possibly being out here for Scotty's uh, first tee shot. My dad's a big Jack Nicholas fan, so I had to come out and, and see it. Scheffler has to be careful with this one coming back for par. Scotty probably shocked the golf world by bogeying the first hole at Cheap Sea Sawgrass, but immediately did what he would expect. Rolled off three straight birdies, makes the turn at 200 par, a very solid start to the afternoon when conditions are usually tougher, but I have to think that Scotty, as he makes the turn, feels like he's right where he needs to be. It felt fairly stress-free. You know, I had the really good par there on 18, and outside of the start, you know, I played a lot of really good golf. You know, it's nice only having one bogey around this place, and hopefully, you know, continue to do more of that the next few days. Kind of the perfect storm for, for some low scores out there. Low wind, pretty soft greens. Yeah, on paper, uh, definitely makes it sound easy, but rough was still thick. Uh, the greens here are small, and it's hard to get up and down when you miss them. And, of course, there's just so much water, so much trouble. So I think it's no surprise that this leaderboard is stacked full of big names, you know. Uh, Rory McIlroy, Xander Shoffley, Wyndham Clark, Scotty Scheffler's two back. Because even though the scores are low, it was still a good test. Just getting started for our second round. Scotty Scheffler gets the quick turnaround to continue his title fence this morning. And he's actually getting his left shoulder and kind of the neck area getting worked on behind the tee. Yeah, so we're, I don't know, four holes in Scotty's round and he's Showed some discomfort first on the 12th hole. Asked a rules official, was looking at his back, kind of neck area. Just asking if he could get some treatment. His game is fine, but he's clearly showing some discomfort now. Right before his tee shot on the 15th, he kind of hid behind some trees. Got even more treatment, so number one player in the world, defending champ, is struggling here on day two. According to comms, a player can receive a total of roughly 15 minutes of treatment. Either then he's got to play through it, or he's got to withdraw. He's still playing pretty well. Seems to want to play through it. He's been told he, the group's on the clock, so they've kind of got to speed it up. They've got to stay within pace of play. And so now this just becomes how much pain can Scotty tolerate as we play the rest of this round. How do you want to handle this? I think someone needs to stay with him. Okay, I can do that. And then someone else can be in here, monitor Fitzpatrick, Wyndham. I mean, there's so many other big names, so many stories that it's good to have someone on Scotty, see what happens, see how he finishes, and then someone else follow everything else. Just getting my day started. 
Friday, round two. The greens were pretty soft on Thursday now, baking out a little bit, but a guy who is having no problem judging the speed of the greens is JT Poston. Wow, 34 feet for birdie. I did not expect that to go in, but that was an awesome putt. He's, uh, JT Poston's now nine under par, tied for second, just one off the lead. How crucial was it to, to see those putts drop early on in the day? The putter is a strength of mine, and, and so it's nice to see some go in early. You can make birdies if you're hitting in the fairway. It's scoreable. The greens are great. They're soft, but if you get out of position, it's still, still tricky enough. And Clark moves to 14 under par. An amazing performance today. I've really looked at how Scotty has been playing this year and last year, and I use him as someone to try to keep up with, and he, he plays good every week, and so my thing is just try to, to be consistent. Yeah, thank you. There's a bunch of guys that are still kind of in contention, but Wyndham's just got a pretty large lead. I mean, it's incredible. This yeah. is not a golf course on paper that you would think would suit him. We talk about Scotty so much, and the consistency is crazy, but, you know, since last year's players... Last week at Bay Hill was his only other win. Wyndham's really been the winningest top yeah. 10 player in the world in this span. Obviously, the US Open win, the Wells Fargo win, the Pebble Beach win. He's really finished the deal in big ones. Fridays with Smiley, happy hour. Tell me what's the concept? What do you guys do? Uh, well, we've done a little bit of everything, you know. I think it started uh, at Saturday, Phoenix Open with my man Kevin Kisner. Last week, Bay Hill, you know, we had Jordan Spieth and Max Homa kind of setting the precedent for other players to kind of help tell us how the golf course is playing, tell us about their rounds. The NBC Sports description of what Fridays with Smiley Happy Hour is, it says it's insight, insults, and jokes. What's the balance, would you say, between those three? You know, I mean, it, well, when we have guests, I think it's more insults <laughs> than insight. Yeah. Just finished a little off today, but still, you have to be proud of where your game's at. It was more than a little off, Smiley. Let's be clear. <laughs> it was, I had it moving. You're lucky I didn't do the lead in there because I would have been way harsher than that. <laughs> Kevin, Steve Stricker has been so great in the locker rooms at these President's Cups and Ryder Cups. I wouldn't know. This on a Friday, you know, we're not quite into the action on the weekend of, of who's going to win this golf tournament, even though Wyndham Clark's got a four shot lead. But still, you know, we're able to kind of separate the two, and I think it's been really nice. And a work in progress, but I think we're getting there. We are headed out to pick up with Sam Burns. He is seven under on his round so far and played the front nine in 30. So we're going to see how he finishes. Don't give up on it yet, Percy. Wow. Don't give up on it yet. No way. How about that? I knew if I could come out here this morning and post a really good number and kind of get myself back in the mix a little bit, I don't think I'll be close at the end of the day, but a lot closer than where I started. So for Sam Burns, who's still six back, that's not going to be enough. Those bogeys on 15 and 18 are going to hurt. He did a lot, but I'm not yeah. sure he did enough. Since Two of then. last year's major champions in contention. Yeah, Clark and Harmon. We'll see how far Harmon gets. He's already been through 11 and 12, which are two of the easier holes on this backside, so we'll see how many more he gets. Nine birdies, one bogey. Eight under round of 64, the best of the week. For Brian Harmon on his third round Saturday, he's within one. What's been the biggest difference for you over these last two rounds compared to the first round? You know, the first round was really frustrating because my preparation was so good this week. And then Thursday was just a dud. The last two days have felt more like what my preparation was like. What are you doing this afternoon? Probably Clark Shoffley, just depending on where things end. If it's Clark out to the races, um, I think that's a pretty clear storyline. Otherwise, battling back with Xander. You've got birdie holes coming up. You can hit in the water on 17, 18. Let's not commit to anything too early. I'm sure we'll have plenty to write about. Very short. Very short. Honestly, I just, I made that swing and chunked it. That tee shot went 102 yards. It was 118 to the front yeah. edge. That's a giant miss. 
it's unfortunate on a hole that's uh, so iconic and has a bunch of trouble to have kind of your worst swing of the day. But yeah, I followed it with a great swing and a great putt. Right now, the story would be Wyndham had this four shot lead, second largest in player's history, and now it's a, a bunch of leaderboards. And Xander Shoffley has just gone out there and played 17 holes and made no bogeys. Seven birdies to catch Clark. After Wyndham Clark puts it in the water on 17, Xander Shoffley steps up to 18 teeth with a one shot lead. It's going to be fun tomorrow. and. You know, he has the upper leg right now, and, and I'm hoping tomorrow I bring it and we can uh, have some fireworks and play some great golf. I'm going to go to the range right now and, and try and clean up some of those uh, missed fairways on the back nine. Xander holds a one-shot lead over Wyndham after quite a battle today. The shot of 17 is, is what we're going to remember, but again, that's TPC Sawgrass. A couple swings can have uh, outsized penalty, and you can lose a four-shot lead pretty easily. plans what what are y'all thinking um, I think just monitor the leaderboard I mean there's gonna be stories probably from beyond that but today is about one thing and it's who wins well despite dealing with neck discomfort this week Scotty Scheffler the defending champion is very much still in this is a clean card so far as he gets close to making the turn including an eagle and two birdies and now he's just one off the lead he got this new putter he got a little taller putters longer the mallet <laughs> Fiftieth players, and he'd be the first one to go back to back. I think that speaks to TPC Sawgrass, how you have to do everything well here. It doesn't favor one style of play, um, and how hard it is just to win one players, let alone go back to back. And then you got a guy who's been hurt for the better part of two days, might win his second week in a row. I think it's just crazy. I mean, Scotty Scheffler, if he can't be beat when he's injured, when are you going to beat him when he's healthy? We knew this was going to be a heavyweight battle. It was just a matter of who between Scotty Scheffler, seven under on his date so far through 15, but Xander Schauffele still has the one-shot advantage right now. It's been an incredible save. The first back-to-back -back holes, bogey or worse, the entire week for Schauffele comes at the worst time. It's hard, you know, playing with the lead always. Um, there's more pressure, obviously. You're later in the day. There's a little bit of wind. Mark. And this is overcutting as well. Going to miss the fairway right. They've just been in neutral. I don't think either one would say they played horribly, but there's fine lines here. And if you're just a little off on this golf course, you get penalized and it's hard to make birdies. And I think that's what we've seen from them. Now for a 64. Scotty Scheffler, C at 20 under, is good enough. Saves his best for last. Clark is 17 feet away. Makey's in a playoff. Miss and Scheffler makes history. Oh! Unbelievable! How did that not drop? But Scotty Scheffler is the 50th Players Champion and the oh, first baby. to go cool. back to back. Wow, history at TBC Sawgrass. Kind of a crazy finish. I mean, I think we thought maybe best case Scotty's in the playoff, but yeah. ones that wins it outright, plenty of chances around him, but um, he did enough to get it done. It's good to be sitting back here again. You know, today was another battle. Uh, it was a hard-fought week. Um, you know, a lot of guys played played some really good golf this week. Uh, you know, a few of them finished at 19. I finished at 20. That's some, some really good golf around this course. I needed some help, obviously, going into today if I wanted to win the tournament, and um, I felt like if I could go out and shoot a good, good round on the front nine, I could put myself in it as long as you know one of them didn't shoot, you know, four or five under on the front as well. Going into days like today, it's it's nice coming out on top for sure. Thankful for the uh, the volunteers and the fans. So I'm just very thankful to have such a great support system, not only at home but have a great team around me um, as well. Fantastic. Just get the car right over it and find family. And... You know the drill here. Yeah. You get to look at it, but you can't sign it. Pretty good. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's quick work. <laughs> yeah. I like that. You're happy, aren't you? <laughs>